had such a great life on video because they're funny. They're good. On well, MacGruber dropped something crazy like 2,300 theaters after the first week of its release. Yeah. It, so, I mean, I'm wondering, and I haven't dove into it, but I'm wondering what else came out at that time to make it suddenly drop off that much. <laughs> yeah, because it fell. I mean, that's a hard fall. So it came that's out like in a May. That's like a 98% drop off i mean it's crazy may 2010 movies so let's see here oh there was iron man 2 in may oh let's see may 10 oh there was oh wow yeah this was kind of in trouble so here we go may oh yeah shrek forever after came out that probably knocked some of this the robin hood no there wasn't much stuff in may iron man 2 was still doing well that's a tough drop yeah. From Very 20. unfortunate for it too. But so I, mean, I feel like you know, ten million ten million budget is not is not a big budget for movies these days. And it would have grossed right around ten million as well. I mean, can you all right, this movie, you're a studio executive. Do you expect this movie to to you watch this movie, you love it, right? This is a funny movie. But you can't be surprised that it didn't do well would you be surprised to see it not doing well yeah a little bit just for the fact that i think past saturday night live movies for the most part did do okay i mean not all of them you know you've got a couple tanks in there like ladies man um can I buy you a, can, 2000 can i buy you a fish sandwich I love it's that. pat i mean that's that only grows sixty thousand dollars in the u.s i mean that's bad but i mean now, I guess Coneheads tanked as well. But like Wayne's World did well. Blues Brothers did well. So I don't know. I mean, I feel like it's one of those, if you can find that niche audience, but it's such a low budget, it's a low risk, higher reward type of scenario. Yeah. I mean, it's I, like, I feel like if it could have stayed in theaters for even another week, it probably makes its budget back. And then everything else after that and then dvd sales you know you're going to be you're going to be into the positive but you know that didn't happen i mean good news for mcgruber if this tanked now its secondary life wouldn't be massive but since it fell so badly in 2010 this is when people are still buying dvds and blu-rays so i'd imagine this dvd floated around between college room college areas and kind of people in their 20s oh yeah yeah. It's a fantastic, especially for that age group. It's a fantastic party movie. That's good. Get a couple, get a couple drinks in you, you know, get a little laid back, and you're gonna have a good time with it. During their eulogies, when Tug dies, he says a bunch of f bombs, but the kids were laughing. <laughs> that's one of my, that's one of my favorite, <laughs> favorite exchanges. But there were kids present. They laughed because of your use of heavy language. And then there's just a little dead break. And then he goes, well, F him. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. The game love has it. changed, but the players are the same. <laughs> this, you can just read the script out because there's just so much. Oh, man, I love so many of the quotes in this. <laughs> You know what's crazy? We were watching the credits last night, and I knew back when we – so you've got a connection to this movie too. You worked on on Premature with me, right? Yeah. The prop master from Premature was the prop master from MacGruber, Jason Davis. Really? Yeah. So if you want to do your seven degrees connection, you got it right there. Oh, that's cool. But there's a couple other PAs that I've worked with, and one I just worked with last summer who are now both assistant directors – but they were additional PAs on this movie, too. Premature. How long ago was that that you and I worked? Was that when I first met you? Yes, and that would have been that would have been 2010. So this movie would have just come out. I remember I was and I, yep. and I remember Jason Davis saying how crazy of a shoot it was, how nutty and gnarly and tough, but how fun it was, and that he actually thought it was a rewarding movie. I mean, 28 days. That's going to kill you. That's a fast shoot. And oh, oh, premature work because we were in that one, basically one location. We could just film over and over. Yeah, at, this, at that school. That was a weird one. I was managing Comic Cons at the time. Then I got brought into that. I just thought I was going to be there for a couple days. And they're like, all right, Mark, you're staying around. I'm like, what? <laughs> Thank goodness you did. Yeah. I mean, that happened to me on four different shows. I think people knew how to trick me because since I was doing Comic Cons, I would just do, 
I did a lot of pilots. That's just seven, eight days. Pilots are gnarly, dude. Oh my gosh. Pilot, that's like, you never sleep working pilots. You got to set all the mics up. Did you do the reshoots on Premature? No, I did not. Oh, I had to do the walkies on that, brother. But um, that was like a 20-hour day. What was I getting at? I forget. Yeah, but people kept roping me into these shoots. And I kept finding myself working on move, full, full movies. Hey, bring Mark. We'll trick him. Well, that's money, man. You can't complain. Did you watch Premature? So, you know, I never ended up seeing it. It was on, wasn't it on like Amazon or Netflix on, at think, one point? It's still on Netflix. I might have to check it out. It has heart. It, it grows on you. I like that kid, his friend. I liked him. His goofy friend, isn't he in like Red Oaks that's on Netflix? Yeah, he's doing really well. Yeah. I, don't, there was I remember a, seeing him on that poster a, a couple years ago. I don't know how much we can talk about. There was a day when I had to lock up an entire street by myself, and there was about 30 houses. And so I was sprinting up up and down lawns all day. I don't know if you remember that. But they're that riding, movie was a mess. But they're riding bikes, and the that kid, I was like locking up a car. And that, that kid was funny, but he just drove by flicking me off the entire time. <laughs> he had just watched MacGruber. Yeah, I was like, I like this kid. He's funny, man. I was like, I hope he does well. But yeah, because he just drove by on his bike flicking me off the whole time. I was out of, out of breath sprinting up and down the street. But I, mean, yep. I would have I liked working on this movie just to – because this is Yorma's first big film. There's probably a lot of pressure on it. But the material is so insane. It just would have been fun to see them pull that off and move so quickly in the lighting. I think, yeah, you're right. Like, this is one of those movies that the 28 days punches you right in the face. But a month later, you're yeah, I like, think that, that was really rewarding. I think that schedule must have been otherworldly intense. But, and you know, I don't, I don't know Will Forte. I haven't heard anything negative about him or any of this cat of the cast for that, that matter. But I'd have to think that despite it being the pressure being that high and that difficult, everyone was probably still having fun. I mean, it's it's tough not to have fun when you're dropping this type of dialogue. Yeah. Like most of the time on a set, when you're when we're shooting a scene, you know, all the crew just kind of go off and do their own thing. You know, they they go get lost or bury themselves in their phone. As long as they're quiet, none of us really care. But it's like I can see everybody staying on set just to see what Will Forte does next. Oh yeah, just the, or just to see how Ryan Phillippe deals with it. I don't know how I don't know how him and Powers Booth just don't lose it. What'd you think about Phillippe in this movie? I thought he was a solid straight man. I thought he was good too. I mean, he there was a couple times they tried to add some some humor to him that I don't think necessarily goes with his character and what he's about. But he's he's a good opposite to feral i'm sorry not to feral to to forte i learned a lot working with you the last few days all of it what not to do but that's something i I think one of my favorite lines i gotta say it before i forget it dixon piper goes wait wait so we're just gonna wing it and mcgruber looks at him goes piper there's a big difference between winging it and seeing what happens (laughs) now let's see what happens i bet i use that line every single day of my life uh, that's, that's a great line. And I also love when he's like, I don't, I don't want to use the F word, but I, we boned last night. I don't want to ruin the sanctity of it. <laughs> I don't want to diminish the value. And then, <laughs> But like, I banged her. <laughs> and so oh he, he hooked up with Vicky St. Elmo, and then he goes and he hooks up with Casey's ghost. And he looks at Vicky St. Elmo later on in the movie, and he's like, I pork Casey, uh, Casey's ghost last <laughs> night. And he goes, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> Oh, those sex scenes are so uncomfortable. They're I mean, so ridiculous. I, I, and they go on, and then he's like, I'll fill you up. And then she goes, I'll fill you up. <laughs> no. Let me do the talking. And then the one with Maya Rudolph just keeps going, yeah. She was like eight months pregnant during that scene in real life. <laughs> I I remember reading that. And that is nuts. And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's like, I shot. And she's like, I shot too. <laughs> so so cla- oh. <laughs> It's so uncomfortable. The stupid radio that he carries around with him. I mean, people did that. When, remember when people take the face off of their radio? Oh, man. What's that radio called? Like a bloke? Uh, oh, man. I mess it up every time. And it's then, this very specific kind of radio from like the 80s. And then he got one for his birthday from Ryan Phillip, and he was so happy about it. Oh, man. And you know the AD was the guy, the AD was the guy who got his car smashed who came out yelling? That was the first AD. No, I didn't know that. That's great. 
He's a big dude. Yeah, he seems like a first AD, doesn't it? No wonder MacGruber runs away after that. MacGruber. Oh, man. And then the end. All right, so Val Kilmer shows up. and <laughs> He survives the he survives the, uh, the warhead. And he, all right, so he gets exploded. No, he gets kicked off a cliff. And then he gets shot. And then he Wall gets falling. Yeah, and then he gets blown up, right? And then MacGruber pisses on him. What's great about that that piss reveal though is like the the angle is on his dead, explode up, you know, burned out body, and then you just start seeing the trickle of pee. <laughs> but you can tell like it's not like a good heavy solid stream of urine, like that goes straight from an individual into the you know into the toilet. Like this, you can tell has been traveling hundreds of feet onto the body. Like the spray is all over the place. Oh man. And then later on at the wedding, it's they have a bunch so of good. they have a bunch of photos, and he puts up a no tip sign for one of the guys, and then he ends up it's having the same dude. Yeah, it's, just, it's the same barista, <laughs> that poor guy. And then they have a sex they have sex on the dance floor. It's the weirdest oh, movie, isn't it? Classic MacGruber. All right, so we put together a crew. You want to get into our crew right now, so we're not just quoting lines from this anymore. Yes, we put out our uh, we put together a killer stopper crew. Correct? Is that the name of it? So yeah, I, I love that line in the movie too. Oh, He's put a, Punk Cunt's put a dream team of killers together. Well, I'll put my own dream team of killer stoppers. <laughs> I gotta find my list here. Going old school, MacGruber notebook. Well, I like it because that way I don't have a computer on my lap. Sometimes it's kind of annoying when you just have a, like, you know, you feel like you have a computer with you at all times. So sometimes when I write a lot of notes, I just like to have a notebook. So I don't, I feel like I'm not staring at a computer. I've got MacGruber handwriting, though, so if I start writing too much, I can't even read my own handwriting. Megan told me that my writing looks like the writing of a madman. So if someone grabbed this book, they would need, like, a code cracker to figure out what was going on with this. It's in Mark speak. All right, who's your who's your first? So the, we're doing Killer Stoppers, right? So you pick five, I pick five, and we'll break them down. So I, you know, I'm a giant Bruce Willis, John McClane fan, but I feel like he is kind of a dude that's in that lives in the moment. All of his movies, he's never really planning that far ahead. He's always more of a, re a reactionary type of guy. So I, I discluded him from this list. So I just want to throw that out there, and I don't feel good about it, but I wanted to challenge myself. Well, I'm glad you did, man. With that said, this isn't a very uh, original pick, but my, my top choice is probably Ethan Hunt from Mission Impossible. Ooh, Ethan Hunt, am I? I mean, he's a killer stopper. You don't even need a team with him. No, you don't. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. His running got me a lot of reads, so I, that's I'm, true. I'm a lot of reads. So I'm cool with 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 Tom Cruise being in any list. Mine is Gunnar Jensen from The Expendables, played yes. by Dolph Lundgren. That's a good one. He's a scientist. He's a maniac. He's huge. He lives through all three of them. He knows how to work a tank. You need. I muscle. was very close to. I was very close to adding a. Uh... An Expendables guy onto this as well. All right, so I'm t I, you got to have Dolph. You got to have Gunnar Jensen. So who's yours? Who's your next one? I feel like you need some sort of analyst in there to kind of get a jump on what's going on, and that's Jack Ryan. Whoa! What, no, please say Harrison Ford. Yeah, yeah, it's the Harrison Ford one. Oh, no, no, I do. I Chris do Pine. like Chris Pine's all right, but I do, I do really like Alec Baldwin's from Hunt for Red oh, October. Oh yeah, which one you want? Uh, I'm go. I gotta go. I gotta go Ford. All right, Ford. I love Patriot Games, man, and Clear and Present Danger. That scene Very good. where the the what the convoy gets shot up, and they're like, "Go, go, 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 go!" And they won't stop. Oh man, that's so good. I love those movies. Another Sean Bean classic death scene. Yeah, yeah it's it is. Stabbed and then blown up. And that's Patriot Games that he's in, right? Yeah, it's so good. All right, this is a team, but we're just gonna have to deal with it. Topper Harley and Ramona from Hot Shots Part Two. I like that because. You know, they blow. They have the highest death record ever, and they can go undercover. They know how to fly planes. They know how to ride horses. They know how to ride motorcycles. They're great with weapons, bow and arrows. And I'd have Ramona on any team as well. She's so, but I, I want them as a team. So I'll, I'll, that's my second pick. Who you got for three? Uh, James Bond. <laughs> James Bond. <laughs> Which yeah. one? Uh, that'll be Daniel Craig for me. You know, I love, I love the old Connery movies. But in my mind, like, 
the new James Bond is Daniel Craig. And I'm going to be very sad when he's done after this next movie. Imagine having Tom Cruise, Harrison Ford, and Daniel Craig on screen together. Well, that, that almost happened on Aliens and Cowboys. Harrison Ford and Daniel Craig. You know, but now that you... 